Hi, I'm Mike and we're here in the Lab Society R&D lab today and we're going to be talking about how to place your thermocouples within distillation heads and in boiling flasks. So first we're going to do height-based thermocouple placement inside of a standard distillation head. So it's going to be kind of hard to see because our heads are silvered, but essentially right now I've already got my thermocouple greased and put into the head and we can see that we have the vapor outlet over here to the right and this is the approximate height of it inside of the head. Just about an inch underneath the lap sighty logo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab my thermocouple and to, a little shortcut makes it easier to assemble these things is actually to slip the cap over first and then the lubricated o-ring so that it's already in place and then I can go ahead and slide this carefully in my head. If my thermocouple is bent, I want to make sure to straighten it out. We're going to make sure that we have a nice seal. Cool. And then we're going to want to line up the bottom of that thermocouple adapter with the vapor outlet so that we are measuring the temperature of any constituents that are condensing in our outlet over here. So if you look over from this angle, we can see right inside of there, that it's right at the bottom. And then if we look at it from the front, we're lined up about, it's actually about an inch and a half under the lap sighty logo, right here. So that's the proper placement for your thermocouple inside of your distillation head. So we also have our um, high efficiency distillation heads. They're a little bit different. Um, we're gonna have two different places for thermocouple placement. We can either go in through the top of the head and measure straight on top of the tube, or we can measure from the side. Um, I usually prefer to put a closed thermocouple adapter, otherwise known as a thermal well, in the top of the head to increase my reflux ratio and rejection. And then I like to use a fixed thermocouple adapter for the side. And I always want to grease my joints. For this application, I'm not greasing them just so I can show you guys where everything is. So this one is a little different. I'm going to want to actually pre-bend before I put my thermocouple into the head. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'm going to put a slight bend on this. And the reason for that is because I want to get to where the vapor is exiting that up tube. So there's two different ways to do this. We can either measure on the outside, which I've seen some people do, right on the outside where the liquid is actually condensing, or where I like to do it, I personally prefer inside of the actual down tube, so that, or up tube rather. Um, fractional tube because that's where the any condensate will actually drip right back in. So I, I personally like my thermocouple probe right about there. Maybe even a little bit less. Notice I'm taking this in and out and rebending so that's why I would wait to grease as well. Might as well have this in the nicest position possible so we get the optimal measurements. There we go. That is precisely where I like to have my thermocouple adapter and a high efficiency distillation head. Right going, right where, right where the vapor is going to start exiting the fractional column and above and in the fractional column so that again the reflux will drip right back in. So now I have two points of reflux ratio. The last place we're going to show you how to put your thermocouple adapter into is into the actual boiling flask itself to avoid um, hitting the stir bar as well as making sure that we're as deep in the solution as we can. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this with some water real quick. Okay. So now I've got some water in here. I'm also going to put my stir bar in. I don't want to just drop this straight in because if I drop this straight in I could risk you know, damaging my glass. This is glass. Although it's American made and high quality, it still, it still can break. So I'm going to slide this in through the side here safely. So now that this is in here, I'm going to go ahead and put my flask into my mantle. I'm going to turn on my stir controller here, which is already on. Make sure it's at zero. Um, maybe turn on a slight stir just so I can have a visual of where I'm going to be in the uh, flask. As you can see, my thermocouple probe is bent. Again, as I was saying in another one of our hacks, do not try to insert a bent thermocouple probe into a thermocouple adapter that's glass. It'll break. So what we're going to do is we're going to assemble our thermocouple first and thermocouple adapter. So cap, o-ring, adapter. 
Notice it slips straight on, it's because our probe is nice and straight. Now, I want to kind of eye this up. So my port for the thermocouple is on the back here. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm basically as deep in the flask as I possibly can while not hitting the stir bar and also not hitting the glass. Because if I'm hitting the glass, I'm not getting a super accurate reading. I, I want to have the liquid only, not the, the glass wall. Because there will be a variance between the actual oil itself and the glass. Because you're going to want to see down in here. Perfect. All right, so we're watching over here as this uh, stir bar flails around because it got hit by the thermocouple. So now that we actually can see and we are in a good spot, our thermocouple probe is very deep in the solution if we look at it from this way. We're super close to the bottom here and we're not touching the glass. So we're out of the way of the stir bar. We're going to be able to read the temperature of the solution as it comes all the way down. So as, as we boil out and we're making our distillate, we'll be able to read that temperature even when we're at super low volume levels. And we will make sure that we don't have the stir bar screw up our reaction. So we can see even if we rip it up and go really fast, it's not going to hit that thermocouple probe. And we're nice and deep. The key to that again is the bend. We want to make sure that we bend that at the right angle. Our new manuals will be explaining this quite well as well. So thank you very much for watching. That's our hump day hack for this week.